Hey guys, this is Chantal and today I want to walk you through how to organize your seeds step by step. Now this is not a rule on how you should organize your seeds, but it's more of a guide to help your seeds be more organized so that when seed starting season comes, which is upon us, it would be a lot easier for you to find what you are looking for or what you are missing. Now I'm sharing with you how I'm planning on organizing my seeds. You are free to change it in whatever way fits you. I'm going to be dividing my seeds into different sections, but before we get into that, I want to show you what I'm using to organize my seeds. So these are the bins that I have been using to store my seeds in four years. And I love these bins for several reasons. One, they are waterproof, so no water can come in and damage your seeds. And also, the height of these bins is perfect. I did ask for what I thought was the same bins for Christmas as a Christmas gift, and uh, I did get what I asked for, so thank you <laughs> for the person who gave them to me. Uh, and I will uh, still use them, but they are not the same size. Unfortunately, I thought they are going to be in this the same height and uh, the height on these is a little bit shorter. So this height I think is more around the six or seven inches and this height over here is 4.3 um, or 4.5 inches. So I will still be using these uh, and I am laying down the seeds in this direction. I don't prefer to lay down the seeds uh, horizontally, be the seed packets horizontally because they can uh, drop the seeds down and I don't tape my seed packets after I have them opened and I prefer to not have to put them into Ziploc bags because a lot of times that's what I do after I open them. I put them into, the, into a Ziploc bag so that I uh, don't lose any of the seeds so that they could just be together and not get mixed in with other seeds. Again, another reason why I like these, which I was, which I was just mentioning, is that the height of these uh, containers is perfect for uh, seed packets because most seed packets are about this high, about six inches or so. Now I did order uh, some new ones that are going to be eight inches and I'm going to be uh, using those for most of the seeds that I will be storing. These ones over here, I do have a purpose for them and I will talk about that in a little bit after we uh, talk about the main important points of organizing your seeds. And let's get to the point. So the way how I'm planning to organize my seeds is by dividing them into different categories, uh, or is that how you say it? How you pronounce it? Categories, that's how I pronounce it. <laughs> I'll, I'll look it up and see how to pronounce it properly. Anyways, so the two categories first that I'm going to be dividing them into is flowers and then uh, vegetables. And the vegetables also would include fruits. Uh, so let's say, uh, this is flowers. What I suggest you do and what I'm going to do is to have two different uh, bins for if you have a lot of seeds of course. If you don't have a lot of seeds you don't have to do this. But if you are a person like me that's a, that just loves to collect seeds and to try out different varieties you might want to have two separate bins or even more. Uh, and you're going to divide your flowers into cool weather flowers uh, or actually three three, um, three of these bins. So you're gonna have divide them into cool weather flowers, into warm weather flowers, and perennials. I'm looking down because I have um, my notes written down so that I don't forget anything. So each of these varieties is gonna have their own bin. So the cool weather flowers would have their own bin, the warm weather flowers would have their own bin, and the perennial flowers would have their own bin. And the perennial flowers would have their own bin. And I also have, uh, these are actually labels that came uh, with uh, some of my storage items that I use to store um, my grains in. Uh, so uh, they came with a whole lot of these stickers and uh, this comes with uh, a chalk, a wet chalk pen over here. Uh, so I could erase uh, it, I could erase a tag if I decide to uh, use that bin for something else. And I love these tags. Um, they're easy to see 
and easy to peel and easy to clean up. Uh, so these are perfect. And I don't know if you if you can find them separately, but this is what they came with uh, my plastic uh, food storage bins. <laughs> So I will be labeling each of these bins. If I have cool weather flowers, I'll label them, um, you know, with, I'll label the bin with that. And if I, if I have um, the warm weather flowers, I'll label that as well as warm weather flowers or whatever I choose to <laughs> label it as. And then the perennials also, I'll label it as perennial flowers. And now when it comes to down to each of these, now you're gonna have, go to each of these bins and you're gonna organize each of these bins now into different sections as well uh, so with the cool weather flowers i have them divided into two categories one is the edible and one is the ornamental so i also i'm not sure if i'm going to be doing that or not but i was thinking of dividing also the edible into shade edibles um, edibles that can live in the shade and edibles that can that would prefer the sun uh, I might do that if I find that I have these things and uh, if it makes it easier for myself to to kind of get through my seeds and find what I need um, but I if I find that I don't have a lot of these things like a lot of uh, shade uh, edibles um, or a lot of shade ornamental flowers then um, um, I will just you know put them into either edible flowers or ornamental flowers and the same is going to go for the warm weather flowers and the perennials as well so you're going to divide them as either edible flowers or ornamental flowers of course that is if you are planning to eat your flowers <laughs> uh, because flowers can be things like herbs or uh, like uh, lavender or hyssop or uh, things that can be used in tea or uh, as a garnish in your food or as a seasoning. Uh, so, um, uh, or you can use the flowers in salads or just to kind of garnish the food to make it look pretty. Uh, this is what I would kind of classify edibles as, or it's flowers that could be used for medicinal purposes like echinacea, for example, or yarrow. Uh, so these are the, the, this is the way how I would divide the flowers. Now, when it comes to vegetables, I have also divided them into cool weather vegetables or fruits as well. Vegetables and fruits are going to be together in the same um, section because a lot of the uh, what we consider uh, to be a fruit is also in the same uh, family as uh, some of the vegetables. Uh, so you're going to divide them also into cool weather vegetables, warm weather vegetables, perennial and perennial vegetables and I would also do the same thing with the cool weather vegetables that have their own bin, the warm weather vegetables again their own separate bin and the perennial vegetables their separate bin. Um, if you have more, you could have, of course, you know, if they don't fit in one bin, you could, of course, divide them into more than just one bin. But I think uh, this would just makes it, make, makes it a lot easier, in my opinion, when seed starting season comes and you want to know, let's say you're planning your spring garden, which I spoke about um, in the last video I put out, I was talking about planning your vegetable garden and I was showing you how I was planning my spring vegetable garden. Uh, you can just grab that cool weather vegetable uh, and you can choose from that bin what you want to plant in that season and then when you when you're planning for your summer vegetable garden you could do the same thing and same with the flowers now some of course have to be started earlier but at least if you know what you what if you're planning for the warm weather you know what where which bin to go to and if you're planning for the cool weather which bin to go to and again if you're planning for flowers or vegetables which bin to go to so now when it comes to the vegetable bins for the cool weather, you're going to divide the cool weather uh, vegetables or fruits, again, the warm weather vegetables and the perennial vegetables in the same uh, way that I'm going to talk about right now. So you're going to divide them into the way that it makes the most sense to you personally. Uh, so for me, what I have decided to divide them into is... Uh, families sort of but not completely <laughs> so I have brassicas I have melons and I have herbs squash root vegetables 
leafy greens, legumes, and nightshades. And that would be the same way, I might have have to add some other categories in here, but that would be the same way how I would divide the cool weather vegetables, warm weather vegetables, and the perennial vegetables. For the perennial vegetables, it's not going to be probably melons or something like that, uh, but if there are families for the perennial vegetables, you can divide them into families. Or if there are perennials that live in the shade and perennials that live in the sun as perennial vegetables and fruits I'm talking about, then you would divide them into shade category and sun category. Um, I know I said to divide the perennials the same way as the cool and warm weather vegetables. I think I'm mistaken on that, sorry. Uh, I was just looking at my notes and <laughs> um, I think perennials are a little bit different than the cool weather vegetables and uh, the warm weather vegetables because uh, those plants that we plant every year are um, typically very different than perennial, what we would call uh, a perennial. Like for example, strawberries is a perennial fruit uh, and if you have seeds for strawberries and you want to start them um, from seeds, I wouldn't divide that by uh, a fruit family, uh, but instead I would you know put it in a category that loves the sun let's say or maybe if it's like if it likes dry or wet conditions I would divide them into categories that l like wet conditions or dry conditions so you kind of want to think about what types of seeds you have and how you would like to divide them specifically for what works for you now for my purposes as a person who saves seeds for when it comes to dividing the vegetables and fruits into different categories um, like the brassicas, the melons, the herbs, and stuff like that. I'm going to divide them into categories that could possibly cross-pollinate with each other. Like, uh, like for example, cucumbers and melons. Uh, those are things that could cross-pollinate with each other. Uh, now, uh, cucumber, cucumbers, I think, or cucumbers, I uh, forgot how to pronounce it. Uh, that includes um, cucumbers, melons, squash, uh, watermelon, um, all these things are in the same family, but not all of them cross-pollinate with each other. So if you are planning on saving seeds, my, but the way how I'm going to save it and my suggestion is to save the ones that can cross-pollinate with each other. So if you are, if you don't want them to cross-pollinate, you would know, uh, you go to those seeds that you are going to plant that year that are going to cross-pollinate with each other and you might want to plant them very far away from each other or you might, might want to uh, take some of the flowers and tie, tie them off with a net uh, netting bag or something like that to uh, say to pollinate them yourself before they open and save the seeds from them that way or you might, might want to kind of decide, uh, okay, this year I'm going to plant this fruit or this vegetable and I'm not going to plant anything else that cross-pollinates with it. And then the next year I'm going to plant that fruit or that vegetable. So you could kind of rotate every year you plant something different. So this way you would have the uh, varieties st stay true to uh, their variety and not cross-pollinate with something else if you are planning on saving seeds from your vegetables or flowers. For example, lettuce uh, is in the same family as aster. Um, so I don't know if that cross-pollinates with aster. Also, lettuce is in the same family as dandelion. I honestly don't know if these things cross-pollinate with each other, but that's something to look into. You can find um, and more information on like the families of different types of uh, different families of vegetables and what can cross pollinate with each other and how to save seeds and uh, properly um, in this book over here oh sorry I'm upside down uh, this is the seed to seed book uh, it's kind of warped because we accidentally left it outside in the summer one summer um, for a few hours and uh, it rained on it so <laughs> uh, I think I need to order <laughs> another one but it still works, fun it's functional. So uh, I, I highly suggest this book for this type of uh, thing uh, for saving seeds and for kind of recognizing the, uh, the what variety is that vegetable, what family is it in and what can it cross pollinate with and how to save seeds properly so that you don't have them cross pollinate with each other. But we're not talking about seed saving. But the reason why I'm mentioning uh, 
we're talking about seed organization, but the reason why I'm mentioning this is because if you're organizing your seeds for, um, in a way to make it more, uh, to make it easier for yourself uh, to save seeds, to uh, not kind of confuse yourself when it comes to planting season and plant things that could cross pollinate with each other, I think learning how to save seeds is going to help you organize your seeds better and not be confused when the time to plant comes. I don't know if that if I'm making any sense with them with what I'm saying it's a little bit difficult for me to explain this. <laughs> All right so I will be leaving the link for this book the seed to seed in the description box below if you guys are interested in uh, saving and learning how to save your own seeds or in saving your own seeds. So now we are going to talk about how to divide these sections of seeds uh, into different sections and how to tell which one is which so that you don't kind of get them confused and uh, get your system all disorganized. Uh, so the way how I did this in this box, now it's a little bit messed up right now uh, because I have some packets that were too big uh, is by uh, taking a, a piece of cardboard and dividing the different sections uh, this way. I just cut up a, di a piece of cardboard into the proper size that I needed it to be and then I just put it between the different categories or um, this one actually fits um, so I can have seeds on this side and then seeds on this side so I also put a piece of cardboard in the middle to divide them um, this way as well. So I had my flowers and herbs on this section and I had my vegetables on this section and I had them organized by organized by type and I had a piece of cardboard between each uh, different types of vegetables dividing them so that when I took something out I can put it back in that place where uh, I took it out from and it's easy to find it and when I took something and, and when I want to you know uh, when I'm looking for something, it's also easy to find it because it's all sectioned. One thing to consider is also you might want to get a container that is a little bit higher than the seed packets. Uh, and I wish I thought about that before, but I think the containers that I just ordered are higher than the seed packets that I have uh, or taller. Uh, so that uh, the reason why you want your container to be just a little bit higher or taller than the seed packets themselves so that uh, when it comes to putting a divider in uh, you can make the divider a little bit taller and then you can label your divider with a variety that you have um, in there and you want to have a front and a back to your bin so that this way you know um, what's uh, like um, whatever that label says in the front is what's going to be uh, behind it or whichever way you want to organize it. You can also use plastic uh, if, if there is uh, plastic that's um, you know cut up in that way uh, that fits in there. <laughs> you could also uh, use a corrugated board and you can cut it up and then label it in whichever shape you want it uh, to be and then label it. Uh, so this would kind of organize your seeds in a better way. Now if you don't have as many seeds as I have and you're just starting out in gardening and you only have a few of each of these varieties, you could divide them in just one bin and use a system that I was talking about uh, but just on a smaller scale it would be just in one bin and then you would have your uh, your tabs sticking up in uh, like a piece of cardboard or a corrugated board or whatever uh, with the label that what's going to be in that section. Uh, this system could work for anyone really. Now I have seen many different ways of organizing seeds like I've seen people have these uh, little plastic containers uh, that they just uh, put several seed packets in. I've also seen people use uh, just a, a photo album or um, now they even sell uh, these albums that uh, are designed for storing seed packets. Um, so uh, there are many different ways that people prefer to store their seeds, but I find this the, the easiest way because I just kind of like to go through the seeds quickly. I don't want to flip through something to find a seed that I'm looking for or a, a variety that I'm looking for. I just, this is a lot easier. I could just open this up and 
I can you can easily see the label of the plant and you can see the the tabs uh, would be sticking up like this and you would have uh, the label over here and you could you know ruffle through the seeds pretty quickly and get to what you want rather than having them in an album I think that's just Per, to me personally, uh, that's annoying <laughs> because I don't want to sit down and flip through a book while I'm just trying to find the seed that I, the variety of seed that I want, and just uh, because this season can be uh, pretty busy to uh, get the to get the seedlings started, to um, order seeds if you need to order seeds, or order plants if you need to order plants, or you know get the things ready for the planting season so I want to make it as streamlined as possible and make it as uh, quick as possible for me to get to the things that I'm looking for uh, the, the reason why I don't like these plastic seed containers um, is for basically the same reason as the alb album reason where it's just yeah you can divide them into different sections but then now I'm. I have to open each plastic container and look through it and uh, find the variety that I want from those same varieties. <laughs> it's just uh, annoying to me. Now, if that's not annoying to you, or if you find that an easy way for you to, uh, if you, if you enjoy that and you want you want to kind of like slow down the process, great. That, you know, do what works for you. But for me, that does not that does not work. Um, and you could also tie the same variety of seeds, like let's say nightshades or tomatoes in the nightshade family. You could tie all the tomatoes together in a rubber band. I personally don't want to do that. I might even have a different section just for tomatoes and a different section for eggplants, a different section for peppers, because I have a lot of these a lot of different varieties of the same family of nightshades uh, so I don't want to put a rubber band on them because I just want to kind of flip through them and read the labels and pick what I want if, if you're not familiar with the varieties that you know you might want to rubber band them and then take the rubber band off and look through them, through them slowly one thing that you want to do now as you organize your seeds is to jot down on a piece of paper uh, the seeds that you might be missing as you sit down and you organize your seeds and uh, the or the things that you are low on or, or seeds that you might want to order or even plants that you might want to order in the uh, for this coming up season and I think this is a perfect time to order your seeds or your plants because uh, you want to be to uh, one you want to be able to start planting your seeds um, especially if you have something that needs a long time uh, to it needs to be started indoors uh, for a long period of time before you plant it outside you also want it to arrive to your home at the proper time before the seed starting season begins for you uh, and when the seed starting season begins you want to have your seeds and you want to have everything ready for them you also might want to uh, order your seed starting mix your seed starting trays if you don't have them uh, fertilizers all that stuff so I have I will have a link for all these things for you uh, not seeds of course but <laughs> but you know for everything else that I mentioned and you can check them out and uh, they'll be in the description box below I don't know if I said that I got distracted because my phone rang <laughs> or dang <laughs> um, and the last thing that I want to talk about but the very most important thing I think is make it work for you if the way how I am suggesting to organize your seeds does not work for you. You are free to change it. You you know don't feel like uh, after you have tried it that uh, you have to stick with it. You can uh, change it to the way that works best for you. And you know like I said, if you're a person that likes to save seeds, you might want to uh, organize them in a way that allows that makes seed saving easier for you or figuring out what cross pollinates with each other and when it's time to plant. If you are a person that just cares about, you know, producing food and you uh, want to, uh, 
I don't know, like let's say leafy greens. You can put leafy greens together and uh, not care about what type of variety they are, what family they fit in, and just say leafy greens and put all the leafy greens or herbs and put all the herbs together, you know. It do what works, <laughs> what works for you. Uh, you might even put some flowers in with the vegetables, I don't know, <laughs> because you're considering it as edible and you want to put it in with the vegetables and so again that is the most important thing is to do what works best for you i might not even stick to what i just said i'm gonna try it out this year and i would say that i kind of did that before but i think i'm i'm trying to make it even more uh streamlined and more uh, more of a rigorous organizational system if that makes sense uh, and I will try it out this year and see if it works for me if something if I see that something needs to be changed I'll go ahead and change it it's not a big deal it's not set in stone the these are just you know plastic bins with cardboard and erasable uh, labels so super easy to change so right now I'm going to uh, sit down and sort some of my seeds and see what I can organize. I have a, lo a whole lot of seeds that I need to organize and uh, I need to start working on that. <laughs> but one more thing before I start on that, I just want to mention this book over here. This is by Rosemary Gladstar and it's a book about medicinal herbs. And if you are planning on organizing your herbs and you want to organize them in a medicinal uh, way you know you could you might want to check out this book I haven't I'll be honest I haven't read it yet but this I just got it and so it's a uh, on my to read list I've been just flipping through it a little bit because I'm working on a different book right now that I'm trying to read uh, and uh, I have a few of these book of, of this these types of books uh, but I wanted to get a different one that had uh, more, you know, pictures that you can kind of uh, see better because I'm a very visual person uh, and I like to see things. That's how I learn and this is why I do YouTube because I think there are a lot of other people like me that learn through visual uh, learning and, you know, by talking to someone. <laughs> All right, so I want to get to organizing my seeds now. I forgot to talk about is seed storing solutions if you are a seed saver so uh, yesterday I purchased some uh, paper envelopes that are about the size of a regular seed packet like this and uh, you could just easily write on them whatever seeds you have in there and um, if you want, you could write some uh, seed sowing information on it, uh, how deep to uh, how deep, deep to plant it, when to plant it, all that stuff. Uh, and uh, they, they make uh, some of them that are more decorative, but they're a little bit more expensive. I bought a packet of 500 uh, for, I don't know, it was like 15 or 16 dollars. Uh, and they're about, like I said, they're about the size of uh, this seed packet over here and I'm going to be maybe a little bit smaller so that's what I'm from now on what I'm going to be storing my seeds in uh, because in the seed the seed book it talks about storing your seeds in paper envelopes because seeds are a living uh, thing and you don't want to suffocate them I do store them in these Ziploc bags uh, I mean I know I have done this for years and I haven't seen really a problem but maybe it cuts down on their life uh, so storing them in a um, 
paper envelope might be helpful. It also makes it a lot easier to organize your seeds this way because that would be kind of the same size as a regular seed packet and uh, it would just store easier that way and it would look better um, so you can easily uh, again go through your seeds uh, and find what you're looking for. Uh, also I wanted to mention one more thing other than this is uh, storing your seeds in a cardboard box like this uh, is okay. Um, you could store them in a taller one and do the same system that I did like if you have a cardboard box that you uh, from something that you have ordered online that kind of uh, has the proper dimensions that you like you could use it but my issue with that is humidity so if humidity gets to your seeds uh, then you could lose a whole lot of your seeds if not all of them and that's why I prefer the plastic containers versus the uh, versus a cardboard box uh, because uh, the plastic containers keep it protected from the elements and uh, while we're talking about the elements I also want to mention that you want to store your seeds in a cool and dry environment and you want to store them in a dark environment as well they should not be exposed to light and they should not have uh, a lot of humidity in the environment that you are storing them and that's why again um, this type of container works great for that and you, you also want to store them in a cool environment because if you do store them in a hot environment you your uh, the viability of your seeds also goes down dramatically uh, when the seeds are exposed to heat uh, especially if they are seeds that uh, need a cool weather to germinate um, I don't I don't does it matter I don't think so honestly if you know if they are being stored at high temperatures they're just not going to uh, last regardless of what types of seeds they are so I just felt like I need to mention these few things before I uh, continue over here on my seed organization journey. I'm just going to go through this box tonight. I'll probably do the rest on a different day. I'll just try to divide them over several days because I don't think I can do all this uh, tonight. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a lot and I, I need to sleep because I haven't been able to sleep well lately. <laughs> This looks like something I've saved, but it has no labeling on it whatsoever. I think that's from one of the flowers I planted and I couldn't tell what is name what is its name. And that's probably why I don't have a label on it. But if I find the packet for that flower, I'll have to label these. I'll have to plant a few seeds from this to figure out what this thing is. <laughs> It looks like a brassica type uh, seed. It's kind of circular and small.
got I did put all my well not all <laughs> a lot of my warm weather vegetables in here I have still some over here that I can't fit in this box because they are uh, two or in this container because they're too big so once I get my uh, seed packets that I'm the paper envelopes that I'm going to be storing my seeds in I'll also transfer these uh, seeds that are in these envelopes into those smaller envelopes so that I can easily fit them in here and also I'll be getting the larger bins as well so I'll be able to store these types of seeds in those envelopes uh, and I didn't put any dividers yet I will uh, put dividers uh, on a s different day because right now I don't have I need to find some cardboard to uh, divide these uh, seed packets with and again this container might change I might use a different container so I'll have to fit it for that specific container uh, the pieces of cardboard so there's no use of me redoing this again so that's how I will be storing my seeds I have a whole lot to do but this is only the beginning hey guys this is Chantal and today I won't I won't <laughs>